the L analysis for lockdown. I will never say, and any Alice National Trainer will never say that lockdown is not appropriate. It most certainly is. The difference is it can't be the one size fits all. And we have to make that lockdown better. Because if I just, if the violence is out in the sanctuary and we just lock that door, how safe is our space? It's safe until the door becomes breached. And how easy could we breach that door? Well, you might be able to kick it in. You might be able to put a round through the lock. And now your lockdown is no longer locked. So what we say at Alice is, yeah, close and lock that door. But also what I want you to do is build the best fort you can build up against that door. So that if they put rounds through the door or they put rounds through the lock, it's not just as simple as walking into the room. We want to create a time barrier that prevents that individual from getting to us so that we can buy some time to do something else. If we fortify and barricade that space, hey, I see some light over there, which tells me there's probably some windows. Guess what those windows just became? An exit. This training, you got to think outside of the box, folks. This is not for your warm and fuzzy and pretty dressed up folks. Okay? This, this is not, if, if you're too worried about breaking glass to survive, this may not be for you. But I'm pretty sure you're here because you want to make sure you survive. And you want to make sure you take something back to your people to say, hey, we need to really sit down and have a conversation about this. So you have to look at things very, very differently. And anything and everything now becomes an opportunity. Guess what? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a tech guy. I'm a music guy. I love sound. I love instruments. I'm, I'm a sound guy. I, I'm a drummer, a guitar player, a bass player, a piano player. But at that point, this really nice, cool-looking drum set that I'm sure sounds really good on a Wednesday night or, or whatever, whenever they have service in this room, guess what that drum set just became? A part of my barricade. Pastor will forgive me later, and if he doesn't, Jesus will, I'm good. <laughs> right? All these nice cables for these monitors, guess what they just became? Things that I can use to fortify this room. I don't care if the IT director gets mad at me. Probably not the first time I made him mad. Right? So I got to use everything that is in, in my environment to my advantage because I either want to deny or drastically delay entry into this space if I have nowhere else to go or if it can buy me some time to get to a secondary escape. You see, folks, Alice is really simple, and that's why I love it, and that's why I can teach it because I'm a really simple guy. Alice comes down to two major points. Number one, remove yourself from the dangerous location. Or number two, render that location no longer dangerous. It's very simple. We just say, here's some things you can do to accomplish those two goals. If you're writing it down, you missed it the first time. Alice comes down to two very simple points. Remove yourself from the dangerous location, and if you cannot, number two, render that location no longer dangerous. It's very simple. So we want to use everything we can. If we have to hunker down here, everything becomes an option. Every table, every chair, every cable, every, every anything that I can get my hands on to fortify that space. That barricade is not for my OCD folks. That's not the time to be like, well, we got nine chairs on that side and six on that side. We'll get three more and put them on that side, right? 
It doesn't have to look pretty, but what does it have to do? Work. It's got to be effective. I don't care what it looks like. It's got to be effective. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, we have to train that. We can't just go, oh, well, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll be able to do that. Mm, no, you won't. No, you won't. I promise you, if you don't, you will resort back to what you've trained and mastered. And if that's hiding under a desk, a table, a chair, I guarantee you that's what you're going to do. I'm going to prove to you. So I told you the two principles of Alice. Remove yourself from a dangerous location. Render that location no longer dangerous. And it's based on two very simple principles, math and science. Math and science. The math tells me that we have to hold down this event somewhere between four and eight minutes. And that's being very, very generous. Being very, very generous. You may look at me and say, Brandon, well, why do you say that? And this is why. Shots that are fired, and we hear the shots in this room right here, right now. How long is it going to take for the first person to pick up their phone and dial 911? Somebody said two seconds. Somebody else said a minute. Anybody else? Ten minutes. So you, you guys are lucky that the camera crew has restricted me to this space. Because <laughs> this is where I like to walk around and just randomly pick on people. I will tell you, the research tells us in these events, the first 911 call on average does not get dialed until two minutes in. Why is that? Because what I just told you. What are our typical responses? We try to rationalize it. What is going on? What is happening? What is that guy doing? Why is he yelling? What's he saying? Then we make that call. How many people in here ever dialed 911 before? It's almost like getting a mortgage sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> There's a lot of information that you've got, a lot of questions you've got to answer. That takes time. Even if you, you dial 911, if you dial 911 at the two minute mark, ladies and gentlemen, the cops are already two minutes too late to the party. And that's just on notification. That's not on them getting to the front door. That's just them on being told, hey, bad stuff is happening at Calvary. Even if that cop gets to the door at four or five minutes from the time he's dispatched, that really could amount to eight or ten minutes from the time the 911 call was placed. I told you earlier, I walked around in this building a little bit as far as the gates would allow me to go, even if they got to the front door at six minutes from dispatch, that means we're probably really at a like total of nine or ten minutes. What if he, the door he picks the first time is not where the active assailant is? Now we got to go hunt. How long is that going to take? You see, you got to understand when a single shot is fired in this event every four to 15 seconds, it's a time problem. We've got to commit to some action in that two minutes. You see a couple pictures of barricading and fortifying. You notice in those pictures or this picture, there's no aftermarket tool. There's no store-bought object. So we, got to contrain, we have to train with things that are already in our environment, no matter what it is. When you look at this, this barricade, this, this one right here, good-looking barricade, right? Well, yeah, until we realize that there's nothing tying all this stuff together. There's nothing connecting it to the door. So all the bad guys got to do is just open the door. We need to tie that off, make it really, really difficult. Same here. Yeah, we got a bookcase in front of there. Good. But what happens if the bad guy just pushes the door open? Could push the bookcase out of the way, give him access to the room. The bookcase can fall and be pushed out of the way. So we need to fortify that. We need to make it better. Make it better. That's a good start. This picture is actually uh, from Lisa's school. Lisa had uh, one of her custodians put locking casters on bookcases. 
uh, for her special ed students. A uh, teacher, it was one teacher, I think four or six, maybe even eight kids. Teacher was not going to be able to get any assistance from the students. So what they had to do, they had to put that teacher in the best position possible to be able to operate solely. And so simply what they did was, hey, put those big heavy bookcases on locking casters. The teacher can push it in front of the door, establish layers of barricade, lock it, and then continue to uh, fortify and, and build on that barricade. I told you a couple minutes ago, folks, it's not about how pretty it looks. It's about let's be effective. Let's accomplish the goal. This picture is uh, actually from Kent State University in Ohio uh, during an actual active shooter event. And you can see there is, that is a good barricade. I mean, you have, you have points of contact, multiple points of contact. You have multiple layers. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this picture is what do you guys think that this white long stuff is here? Rope, extension cord, bungee cord, computer cable. You may be just as shocked as I was when I first heard what it was. It was the string out of the blinds on the windows. Joe Hendry, who's one of my coworkers, uh, he was a lieutenant at the time at Kent State University before he came to us full time. Uh, I said to Joe when he, he showed us this picture, that had to be a bunch of engineering students. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure if I was in that room, I would have not looked at those blinds and went, hey, get the string out of there. But Kent State University is an Alice training facility. They train all the time. So guess what? Kids went to work. Kids went to work and fortified that room, and the cops couldn't even get in there. A phenomenal barricade they did. 